Hi, this is Eddie Hearn, and you're watching Lights Out. This is Cecil Khan for Lights Out, and with me via Zoom, delighted and privileged to be joined by Ben Jones. Um, ben, good evening to you, mate. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, thanks, mate. Yourself? I'm very well. Thank you for asking. Thank you for asking. Um, obviously, just start off the news that broke to us uh, yesterday afternoon. That uh, you'll be returning to the ring. Um, in a few weeks' time, twenty uh, fourth of July. Uh, firstly, it's been a it's, it's been a long time coming since uh, the, the announcement of your return. But just how excited are you to finally be getting back into the ring? Um, I couldn't put I couldn't put it. I didn't think I would actually be this excited because at the start of my break or my long time off, I didn't really like boxing, and I like I fell out of love of it, and I never thought I'd get this this the spark back sort of thing so now like how how excited i am i couldn't put it into words because I, if you knew me back when i f was fighting two years ago three years ago i loved it i was buzzing off the walls like i know fight night is what i lived for mm -hmm. and then to get this back now this feeling i'd say i'm even more excited than i used to be because there's nothing more than i can't wait to walking out and to like if everyone knows me, I always bring a good crowd and I just can't wait for it, to be honest, like just to get under them lights again and not being funny to get punched in the face. Like, <laughs> it sounds weird, doesn't it? But yeah, I am excited. It has been a long time coming. I've never met a fighter that's admitted he's excited to be getting punched in the face, but fair play to you, man. <laughs> um... Do you know what? It's not the fact that, like, oh yeah, I'll sit there and take, lit, uh, take get, getting punched and that, but... It's a different feeling. Like I don't like. Oh yeah, right. I can hit you back now. I'm not gonna get arrested. <laughs> nah, it's just it's a weird feeling. I uh, every fight I admit, like, oh, I miss getting punched in the. I miss getting punched in the face. <laughs> well, listen, your fighters. I'm, I'm I'm sure you're used to it by now, especially after over 20 fights. You, you must have taken quite a few hits to the face. But no, it's a yeah. first for lights out. A fighter admit you like enjoys getting punched in the face. Um. What's the reason for you coming back into the sport? What's the reason? I must say I've got I've got six or seven reasons that pushed me into to getting back into the ring. I never officially retired for one. And I never like officially said I was going to finish. Um but someone put someone put an interview out and started saying that you don't hear much from me and stuff. So that gave me a bit of a kick at the ass. And then for about, a, my, my son's coming up to free now and he's obsessed with watching me on the, on the TV, like YouTube in my fight. So him watching me clapping, it, clapping and that and cheering and stuff, it gets really excited. So that's pushed me. And then I was driving one day and Mick, one of my trainers messaged, uh, messaged me saying, oh, I've got a fight. Oh, would you help, help him out with some rounds and that? And I said, yeah, all right, give me, uh, like next week or something. And I rang up my missus and I said, oh, I might get back into the gym, might go back into the ring. And she went, oh, it's always tomorrow though, isn't it? You always talk shit. And I was, I took it personal. I was like, nah, nah. So I rang up Mick and I was like, Mick, I'm coming to the gym. And then from that, from that day, I've just been in the gym, con uh, like, not every day, like I've been con consecutive, consistent, consistent. Sorry, I'm not very, very good with my words. I'm very, I've been consistent with it. And then I got the message from Ben Davison to come help spar um, Josh Taylor. And then that just excelled me. Like I was buzzing from it. Like uh, I was only in the gym for probably a week and a week and a half, didn't even spar. And then sparring him, I was just like, up there gave me the opportunity and I'd done seven rounds coming off the sofa and I was buzzing from it. I was like, fucking, I've got to give it one more crack. Do you know what I mean? Like get, get fighting again because I'm doing seven, seven rounds with a, then is it uh, a two world title champion now unified champion from doing seven rounds of him. And then it come a consistent, like every week, twice a week, I was sparring with him. I've done, I've done over 50 rounds of him. Do you know what I mean? And after that, I was I must be I must got got some more to give in this sport. 
And then, yeah, from there, I got talking to my manager, my trainers and stuff. And then, yeah, this finally this date got come up and I said, yeah, get me on it. It's local to me. I actually train in the gym where it's going to be. And I said, get me on it. It's a small show. I thrive for small shows. I love small shows because I always bring a big crowd and I'm really excited for it. So I thought, yes, I'm coming back to it. And then finally it got confirmed. And then, yeah, here we are. What's different to you now than two years ago? That, that's a good question. <laughs> and I'm going, that's a good, what's different to me now is, and it sounds deep, Right, I'm not going deep, but I've grown over life. So I've had so many life lessons in the space of two, three years. Three years, I'd say, it started when I lost to Craig Evans. That's when it, all the stuff started happening and personal issues. I've grown wiser. I'm 24, but I've grown wise to life. And it's made me, having my sons changed me. Uh, I'm working. Believe it or not, I'm a cleaner. Um, uh, my money situations and loads of life lessons have made me wise and more smarter at certain things. I'm picking up on little things, and now I'm actually enjoying watching boxing. And I was in the gym today. I was only doing strength and conditioning. I was just taught, but I'm sitting and thinking like, what I'm gonna do? Like, I never used to think like that. Like, I used to be a uh, 18 year old, fit, thick. 18 year old <laughs> like and I used to just go in there and just punch but now I'm I'm watching I'm learning I'm like I've grown I've grown so I've grown so much maturity in my head boxing wise uh, boxing wise and life wise that I feel like it's made me a better fighter if you look at my record I had four years of madness I had four years of I think them 22 fights 22 fights did you say uh, 22 fights in the space of four years and that is that most pros don't do that I was very uh, active and I think I didn't give my time my bo my body or my mind to learn and sit and uh, sit down and think and I've had these two years off and I feel like I've grown wiser what's the ambition for you to come back into the sport I mean you know with boxing you Fighters can have a long and successful career. Some fighters like to call it a day at an early age. What is your overall plan now, now that you're coming back into boxing? I think putting a plan puts too much pressure on your head. I feel like, yeah, take it fight as it comes. But my gut, listen, I was too money, I was too concentrated on the money and sponsors and stuff first time around that I didn't sit back and look look after my career. I'm 24. I've lost three. I don't think my career is far from, like, it's still getting started, if you think about it. Like, I don't hit my prime till I'm, like, 28, 30. So my goal is to, my, my dream is just to fight for a British title. Win it would be just extraordinary achievement. I, I didn't have a big amateur career. I didn't have no amateur career, to be honest. I didn't have one amateur fight. Um, so I come off the unlicensed. So a goal for me was just to be fight for a British title at least. But I wouldn't put that so much to a plan where it puts too much pressure on me. Uh, I'm taking the fight as it comes. I want to enjoy the sport. I want to enjoy it. Like, I want my son to sit there and watch me. That's all, That's that's a dream come true straight away. Luckily, this fight is on the uh, that fight zone app. So my son can actually sit there and watch, uh, watch me. So that's a dream come true already. So I wouldn't say I've got a plan. I just want to. I just want to enjoy it. Like I, uh, I feel like it was so rushed in my career where I didn't enjoy it. I want to take fight as it comes. Enjoy it. Enjoy the moment. Win, lose, a draw. It's a learning curve. I learn. It's a life lesson every time. Well, either way, uh, well done for getting back into the sport and we're going to be looking forward to, to seeing what you bring when you do return to the ring in July. Um, Experience-wise, what was it like being out there with Ben Davison and Josh Taylor, who's recently just become the undisputed uh, super lightweight champion of the world? It, it was only round the corner for me. So, luckily, I only live round the corner. No, now, I mean. So, <laughs> where, where their base is, I'm literally round the corner. 
But when they asked me, I was like, I was like, because I sparred him for the for his fight before. The, who's the Chinese fellow or the Japanese fellow? What was it? Kong Song. Yeah, I think so. That's yeah, that was it. So I sparred him twice, I think. And then he asked me, then I messaged Ben and I was like, when the fight got announced, I knew Ramirez, if you watch my style, I'm a bit of like, I sit on the, I, I come forward, I'm a tall fella, but I come forward and I, 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 I'd say I'll try to fight like a Mexican as much as I can. But as soon as the fight got announced, I messaged Ben. I was like, if you need sparring, just let me know. And he didn't read it. And then one day I had a text and I was like, I fucking message it, man. Like, but yeah, and I said, yeah, when, when, when is it? And he said this day. And I was like, yeah, I'll be there. I, not being funny, I was shitting myself. Not shitting myself. I wouldn't say I'm, I'm ever scared or shitting myself. But like, like I said before, I just come off the sofa. Normally people are like, oh, let me get a few spars in and I'll, be, I'll, I'll get back to you. Or let me have a, a few training sessions. I'd literally just come out off the sofa. It was a week in the training. And when they said to me, I was like, yeah, like, this is a big opportunity where if you get knocked out as an experience, you got knocked out by a unified, unified world champion. But I thought, yeah, you got to take, you got to take this chance. I've got, like, not being funny, it's my CV. I've got that on my CV now where I've sparred Josh Taylor, unified world champion. So I said, yeah, sod it. And then being in the ring, oh, my God, it was just... They were very good competitive spars. Like, it was very enjoyable. Like, not being funny. Sometimes he was playing with me. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, he's no mug, Josh. And he's just... I couldn't... I wouldn't... I, I would say... He, where I weren't really into boxing watching it, he won a fan of me. Like, sparring him, I was just enjoying it every time I learned. It. Like, every, t- every spar I would say I learned. He'd do something. The next sparring session, I'd copy him. And like, and then he was complimenting me saying, Ben, you're getting better every time. Like, like a few of his compliments, like meant a lot to me, like things he was saying to me and that. So that I was just buzzing off that anyway, that coming from him. So that was just an experience in itself. Like he's by far the best person I've ever sparred. Well, you get back into the ring, you're going to be fighting on fight zone and you've had the honour of fighting a undisputed super lightweight champion of times are looking Times have been really good for you, and hopefully a, a few good uh, wins as well. And get you right, right back up into that British, British title. Yeah, it's, I ain't got that much of a bad record. Where I think of two, three, or four wins, and I could be knocking on like big title doors. You know what I mean? Well, fingers crossed. Um, but listen, Ben. Obviously, um, honestly, um, all the best of luck with the the comeback. We're going to be keeping a close eye on it, and uh, hopefully. We'll get to speak to you soon. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. I really appreciate that. No problem. Ben Jones, honour and a privilege to finally speak to you. And we can I quickly can I just quickly say, can I have a big shout out to uh Arctic Electricals and Essex Heating? Because without them, I wouldn't even be paying for my medical. So a big shout out to them for supporting me and sponsoring me for that. So appreciate that, boys. No problem. Well said. Always good to remember your sponsors. Ben Jones, look after yourself, buddy. Good speaking to you, and hopefully we'll catch up. Thank you, you, sir. Thank you very much. Bye, mate.